I'm not going to ask you if you think it was a good communique or a bad one. I know the Biden administration is actually trying to play this up as a sign of progress. But what does it tell us about the state of affairs in the world today with after more than uh, a year of war, this was still an issue worth grinding over. They spent 300 meeting hours coming up with the final language. Yeah, and there's no question that they uh, made a compromise in order to protect unity uh, among the G20. This is probably more than anything a win for the global South. Uh, India, uh, Indonesia, uh, South Africa, uh, countries uh, that uh, are also involved with this BRICS uh, forum uh, that the Russians mm -hmm. and China put together. So I, I think the whole goal was to try to protect the unity of the G20 uh, so that everybody would look like they are coming together uh, diplomatically uh, with regards to the importance of being unified in the world. From your vantage point, was it a mistake for Xi Jinping to then skip this if the Biden administration was able to uh, keep, a, keep the unity amongst what we're now calling the global south, these developing countries that are part of the G20? Well, frankly, it's, it's a little strange that, uh, that she would not take advantage of uh, being there at the G20, particularly with the economic problems that uh, he's facing in China. But perhaps it's because of those economic problems that he, feel, he feels he was not in a strong position uh, to go to that kind of conference. But uh, I, I, think, uh, I think it probably would have benefited uh, him and China a lot better to have been there rather than stay away. President Biden uh, spoke to this, spoke about China while in Hanoi on the heels of the G20. Mr. Secretary, here's what he said. Really what this trip was about, it was less about containing China. I, I, I don't want to contain China. I just want to make sure we have a relationship with China that is on the up and up. To make sure we have a relationship on the up and up. I'm not sure exactly uh, what that defines to you, Mr. Secretary, but the president's being criticized by some, including Republican presidential candidates who say this parade of cabinet officials to China is the wrong move, that we should not be embracing China and should, in fact, be taking a harder line. How important is it to continue talk? Should these two presidents be in touch? Well, I, I don't think there's any question that, uh, you know, at the same time, we have uh, huge differences with uh, China, and we're obviously in a global competition in many parts of the world. But it, it's still because of, of the economic relationship, I think it is important to be able to have a, a dialogue uh, with China and with their leaders. Uh, and I, I think if we can continue to have that dialogue, at the same time make clear that we have differences with regards to uh, a lot of areas, uh, that's mm -hmm. probably the best approach to take right now uh, as we try to see whether or not we can, we can build hopefully some kind of relationship where maybe we can make some gains in trade and in some other areas like cyber. Uh, and at the same time, obviously, uh, maintain our differences with regards to our military positions, particularly on Taiwan. Today is also, of course, the 22nd anniversary, and we're remembering those lives that were lost on the attacks on 9-11. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin spoke um, about this at a remembrance ceremony at the Pentagon. I want you to take a listen to what he had to say. And as the years go by, it may feel that the world is moving on or even, even forgetting what happened here on September 11, 2001. But please know this, the men and women of the Department of Defense will always remember. The defense secretary there, we also heard from President Biden, but he decided to give his remarks in Alaska. Uh, the vice president was at Ground Zero in New York and the first lady, Jill Biden, was at the Pentagon. Was it appropriate for the president to give these remarks in Alaska and not attend uh, one of these events? either in Washington or Pennsylvania or New York City? Well, I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, putting on my uh, former chief of staff's hat that uh, uh, logistics counts for a lot here when you're trying to plan where the president's going to wind up. And having been uh, at the G20 in India, having been 
uh, to Vietnam uh, and obviously on his way back to Washington, uh, probably the only place they could land and have him uh, take the time to speak uh, on 9-11 uh, was in Alaska. And I, I think what's more important are the president's words uh, there than where he says those words. Well, we should note that, of course, you oversaw the raid that led to Osama bin Laden's death as CIA director. That was in 2011. Uh, Mr. Secretary, what is the threat that keeps you up now? What is the threat that you see facing the U.S. that concerns you most? Well, you know, on 9-11, on uh, and I, I agree with uh, Secretary Austin that memories tend to fade, but I, I hope we never forget uh, Never forget uh, the lessons we learned, uh, particularly with regards to the threat from uh, global terrorism uh, and the need to continue to stay vigilant, uh, that we never forget the, uh, the victims and the victims' families. Uh, over 3,000 were killed as a result of that brutal attack. Uh, and very frankly, uh, I will never forget, <laughs> uh, having been involved in that operation, uh, the SEALs and our intelligence agents coming together uh, to go after and get bin Laden and in many ways deliver justice to uh, the victims' families uh, that the uh, United States, frankly, uh, is never going to allow anybody to attack us and get away with it.